Good afternoon. Ten days ago, in the Central Valley, it was still summer, 96 degrees. And here is the temperature going forward. So we're essentially, we've got like three weeks of fall, three weeks of autumn, pure goodness. And then we're going straight to the cold. Central Valley. But today I want to talk about um, with the temperature being crazy like that, what fruits I would leave on the trees versus what fruits I would pick as the winter hits. So before I begin there, okay, you, you got to visualize it. In the wild, because these trees are stationary, they are stuck to the ground. The only way for them to spread their genetics is through animals picking their fruits and moving it elsewhere, eating it, hopefully, and then digesting it with the seeds through their system. Yeah, <laughs> but we don't have that here. So where I'm going with that is, oftentimes the fruits have to be tasty in order for the animals to eat them. So the fruits have to be ripe in order for the animals to want to eat them and, and move them elsewhere, uh, spread their genetics. So if you come here, let me show you this really quick. So fruit trees, they, they come in two flavors. Climateric, which would essentially is a fancy word for fruits that ripen on your countertop. <laughs> We're talking apples, bananas, tomatoes, things that pick when it's not ripened, and then you leave it alone for a little bit and it ripens. Climateric. Non-climateric include store fruits and other fruits that no matter the amount of waiting on the countertop, they will not ripe. They are ripened the minute you pick them from the tree. So, which would mean, if I pick this cluster of baby star fruits, it's never going to ripen. It is going to taste god awful. If I pick any of these larger ones, maybe this guy. This guy looks like it might be ripened because I do see hints of yellow in it. Um, but these fruits, non-climateric fruits, need the sugar still uh, coming from the tree. It needs the sugar uh, to go into the fruit to make them ripen. Otherwise, again, it, it tastes horrible and I don't know if it's actually edible. So the cool thing with the store fruits is, being that they are the way they are, <laughs> and the cool thing too about store fruits too is the fact that they fruit twice a year in the climate. This is actually the winter harvest, the winter season, uh, which would mean come winter time, the winter months, I leave them alone. The fruits taste great after winter. Yeah. So store fruits, leave your fruits on the tree. Don't pick them. Guavas. It depends on the variety. <laughs> Some varieties uh, ripen on the countertop. Do I have any more? Uh, while most varieties, you got to pick them and then eat them uh, when it's ripened on the tree. So it, it really depends on the variety. But luckily in my case, most of my guavas do not get a chance to overwinter because they are so good that I normally pick the fruits uh, either that or the fruits fall uh, before winter even hits. And w when I say it depends on the variety, um, so, so this is a, a Taiwanese guava, okay? Next to um, like a, a Thai guava back here. Look at him. The Thai guava is, even though this is a young tree, he, he's still holding on to his fruits. I find that the Asian varieties, 
um, they, they tend to food later. They, they tend to hold on to the food for a long, long time. Whereas like the Wubi Supreme above me, these guys food really early and then usually come August, maybe September, the foods are, have either all dropped or I've picked them all. So yeah, but usually gravas, um, I normally don't let them overwinter just because they don't get a chance to overwinter because I, I normally eat them by then. Yeah, more gravas. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the, again, the, the Thai varieties, the, these guys, they, they do okay over winter. Um, you know, like some have said that the fruits are kind of bland, um, but I, I really can't tell the difference. I mean, a fruit is a fruit. So for, for the rare cases where there's fruits hanging on my gravel tree, I just leave them alone. Jujubes, of course. These aren't tropicals. Well, this particular variety is not tropical. Um, but generally, in the next coming weeks, the fruits will all drop and the leaves will all drop because of the cold. So I've got a few weeks to eat all of that. And this is just one side that you're capturing. Now, if you come here, the mangoes. It's been my experience that most mangoes don't make it to winter in that the fruits are you generally pick before winter. Um, though I, I've had, had instances in the past where I've, I've actually picked fruits in like December. Uh, still tastes great. Um, but mangoes, I'm assuming you know, they are climatary in that you, they ripen on the countertop. Yeah, another uh, jujube. Uh, yeah, just like the sugar cane over there, um, I have a few weeks to eat all of the fruits. Either that or just let them fall. Uh, and then the, the tree will shed its leaves. So now, the other tree that I have not found a whole lot of information about, and that would be the Inga here, the ice cream bean tree. Putting him back heavily. Uh, he's looking great now, but he was a bit shaggy uh, before I pruned him. I I'm not sure if he's, he, he um, ripens on a countertop or not. My suspicion is he does not. Um, I say that just because the bean pods that I leave up there, which there are actually several uh, of. Uh, let me see if I can sh find some for you. Actually, if you come here, there, there's a, well, I, I guess that's it. There's a few up there. Actually, I, I picked some this morning already. Um, the thing with the ice cream beans that I like to do is wait until the bean pods are swollen. That's how you know they are ripe, ripe, and then pick them off of the tree. So my suspicion is they are non-climateric. Um, tastes great. Even the ones that I leave over for winter, they still taste good. So yeah, in my case, I, I just pick it whenever I, I see the uh, fruits ripening. So let's, uh, let's take you to the back. Citrus. <laughs> they are not gonna ripen over the countertop. And in fact, citrus needs the cold. Uh, as the fruits over winter, uh, tangerine here, as they overwinter, the fruits become sweeter. So they need the cold. So leave the fruits on the tree. And, and again, that goes for all citrus. Yeah, so <laughs> going, going back to guava. This is what I mean by the Asian variety guavas. They, they for some reason, they, they bloom very late and they hold on to the fruits for a long, long time. Vietnamese guava. My suspicion is these will probably ripen, yeah. I say maybe January, just looking at the, 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 the bumpiness of the skin. But yeah, uh, which is fine. I mean, you know, like you're, you're in January, you are still able to come out here and pick fruits, fresh fruits. 
Yeah, uh, I'm telling you, citrus, just leave, leave the fruits on the tree uh, until they, you know, ripen on the tree and, and eat them that way. Uh, generally, come next year, this, you get the best flavor. Otherwise, if you pick it like that, it's going to remain green like that forever and just eventually just rot. Alrighty. <sighs> Bananas. Two of them. Yeah, bananas, obviously they, they ripen over uh, on the countertop. Now in my case, I mean, I mean, I can, yeah, just take the whole bunch and, and let it ripen over the countertop just because what happens is once you sever the fruit from the plant, ethylene gas is then produced by the fruit and that process causes the fruit to ripen really quick. Um, so now, my strategy, and, and I've been really happy with it, is leaving the fruit on the plant. And what's going to happen is, as it ripens, it actually ripens in stages, starting with the bottom fruits, the bottom row, like maybe 10 of them, and then going slowly, which would mean day after day after day, I come out here, I get fresh ripened fruits off of the vine, I mean, off of the plant. And again, there's two of them. So bananas, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, I, I find that when you, when I sever the fruit from the plant and let it ripen on the countertop, it ripens just too quick, just all at once. And I, I just can't eat all of it at the same time. So longans. So unlike the Hawaiian varieties uh, that you saw in the front, um, the, the Thai varieties, I've noticed just like the Asian variety gravas, they like to hold on to the fruits until winter. Um, but these guys, even though it's green like this, I mean, I, I occasionally come out here and still pick it and eat it. It still tastes good. Um, but I do know these aren't right. No. Still tastes good to me. Um, so I have the option of just eating them the way I've been doing it or just leaving it until it gets more sugar into the fruits and, and hence ripen on the tree. Yeah. So, well, here, let me show you this tropical white. Tropical white guava. If you come here from this angle, maybe, one of the larger fruits, um, not the prettiest looking fruits, um, but you know what? It is just really delicious. It, it's one of the best tasting white varieties. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, in, in past years, I, I've just let the fruit stay in a tree till winter and it still tastes great. So guavas, it, it's your call. But again, most guavas, in my case, I, I never get to give them a chance to stay in a tree just because they either fall or I just, um, they yellow up, ripen on the tree and then it just gets dropped. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah. Indian white. Oh yeah. Yep. So. Going down the list. Anonas, okay. Chiamoya, I'm um, sorry, uh, Etamoya. Yeah, these guys um, will ripen on your countertop. Uh, in fact, you, you really do want to pick them before winter hits just because it's been my experience that a as we get the rain season, the fruits have a tendency to split apart and it doesn't taste good once it splits up. So right before the rain hits or right around the beginning of the raining season, pick the fruits. So that, that's just been my experience at Anona. Now, 
if you come here, white sapote. Check it out. White sapote is a tree that um, I just leave the fruits here to ripen on a tree uh, over winter. Come, I say maybe March or so, the fruits will be really soft, very fragrant. Has the, when you touch it, it's got the consistency of butter. Tastes just like it too, just with pure sugar. White sapote. So now, last fruit. Papayas. Papayas. You can let them ripen over the countertop. They are climateric. However, in my case, I at the same time, I find that if I let them ripen on the tree, it tastes better. Um, yeah, it, it just tastes better for some reason. And, and it's fine, even to winter time. The fruit, once it yellows up, still tastes great. So yeah, that, that's one advantage of growing tropicals is really just the, the year round availability of fruits uh, in your backyard. Uh, and most of these fruits, you don't, you don't, you don't find in the stores. So, oh, and, and, you know, one last tree. I, I, I keep forgetting this guy. So the, the two jujubes in the front were the Sugar King and GA866. Back here, three trees. I actually have three different varieties. The Lang variety, GA866. And then this guy right here, he's a jujube, a tropical jujube. Yeah, you go to Southeast Asia, this guy is everywhere. Here's the deal, okay? This is actually small. Once these fruits ripen, they are like the size of an apple. Uh, and, and you do want to eat it like an apple. But the fruits, I just it um, over winter. It tastes great. And in fact, this guy is still flowering. Um, if you come here, actually, on that side, like, look at it. That is nothing but flowers. So I, I guess in addition to year-round fruits, <laughs> a great, <coughs> uh, excuse me, almost choked. A great benefit of uh, you know growing tropicals is even though it's winter time, these guys still will flower and therefore attract bees and other insects and give them food. So, yeah. So yeah, that's really it. I mean, again, citrus. Leave them on the tree to overwinter. They taste great next year. So yeah. That is the, the the benefits of growing your own tropical fruit trees is again year-round fruits. So all right, have a good afternoon.